We're live. Evening, mm-hmm. everyone. Hello. It has, it has been a week. Mm-hmm. And I was off yesterday because I was at a convention all weekend, and then I had a headache <laughs> on the on the next day after. Yeah, I'll do it. I learned uh, many things over that weekend, uh, particularly uh, one of the hallmarks of Anime North in Toronto is Anime Hell, which is run by Dave Merrill every year, uh, which I learned about a series of children's TV that was running at the, concurrently as many creative tokusatsu in Japan. Uh, and this was called The Wonder Bug. I was I was telling Amon uh, before we went live, and then you got very excited for some reason. Well, as I as I mentioned, if you if you want uh, people, you can go punch Wonderbug into Google and get a look see at this sentient dune buggy that is our lead character. And I commented that he he's terrifying, and Sid and Marty Croft would be proud. But then I decided to go to Wikipedia page and learn two things. One, this is in fact a Joe Ruby Ken Spears of Ruby Spears production of so many. Kind of subpar 80s cartoons. Uh, but the more... Please enjoy uh, the this mo- image. Indeed. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, the more... more The part that made me goof off, of course, is that uh, this was made for a children's variety show from the late 70s called The Croft Super Show, which was, in fact, a literal, actual Sid and Marty Croft production, which is why it looks horrifying, because that's more or less what they... Uh, that was their thing kind of cheap children's television that always sort of makes you think it's probably going to give kid nightmares. Uh, I also found out... Oh, do you do you know who voices Wonderbug? Uh, I do see that in the Wikipedia article. Uh, please tell our audience. Oh, it is it is, it is is the one, the only. It is Mr. Frank Welker, the man who can uh, do an entire payphone conversation by himself. Yeah. Autobots roll out. Exactly. I also found out... Uh, not a lark. I, I, I recognize the name Jimmy Haskell in The Composer, and like, who's this guy? And he uh, he uh, is known for having done a lot of uh, notable American TV scores. He did Bewitched. Uh, he did The Land of the Lost. And uh, against all odds, he apparently did the score for the anime Silent Mobius. The uh, Kia Asamiya show that I don't think is supposed to be very good, but uh, it got on TV here in the 2000s, so people know about it. Uh, that's weird. weird. I really want to know how. Weird I really want to know how that came about. <laughs> uh, wonderful things we learn. Indeed. This, this is why we go to convention panels. Uh, the 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 years I have gone, anime hell has always been a highlight of anime Boston. I, I miss it dearly. Right. That. I suppose you would go over to anime Boston because it's just right across the border. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually, um, I don't think I've seen. I don't think I've seen Dave do it. I know you, usually for AB, uh, since Mike Tools from around here, he usually hosts the uh, Anime Boston version. Ah, okay, of course. And um, although mm-hmm. Mike Tool and him are uh, good friends as well. Yeah, no, I, th- I feel like I've gotten the impression that Anime Hell has a every all every region's got a representative who will go to the cons and duel Anime Hell there. Yeah, he he ran a. Uh, blooper from discotheque uh in mm-hmm. the panel as well of course of uh, course uh may have been part like discotheque did uh some panel announcements at ama north one year mm-hmm. that, when we found out about uh kimono friends so that was great when that was getting a dub uh neil nadelman uh who's industry veteran uh, is also is also in that same like uh, old media, lost media uh, mm-hmm. crowd. For that, yeah. Good times all around. Yeah, get a lot of the same great uh, crowd of people. Mm. All right. Uh, enough about that. I think I'll have some more con stories when I have a uh, time to my stream to myself. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. But we can uh, carry on with with the game of uh, Valhalla. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget exactly where we were last week. I think 
Not new game. We're getting, we're getting to the end of week two. I don't think we were quite there yet, but... I think I accidentally clicked on uh, new game and it's... Uh... Oops. Except there we go. Go back to the tell screen. And it didn't have an option for me to back out, so... There you go. Uh, I believe we're in the middle of uh, having a smoke break with Dorothy. Yes, that is correct. And, uh, I think you're still up for being uh, Jill. <clears throat> yep. So we will go that route. Yep. A uh, very different intro when we uh, do this instead. Yep. Want one? Are you really offering a little girl a cigarette? Now you're a little girl. I always am. Innocence, however, is another matter entirely. But anyway, thanks. No, smoking seriously messes with my air filters and there's a ha and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me, though. Smoke to your heart's content. Thanks. So why don't you tell me about this guardian of yours? I want to know what kind of woman she is. Sure. Well, her name is Sophia Graham. Graham? She's a retired PE teacher. Nowadays, she works at a gym during the morning shift. She's pretty fit, if I do say so myself. She had a daughter. Apparently, she suffered from nanomachine nano rejection all her life. And when she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Uh, what was her daughter's name? I don't know. I never asked, really. Are you okay? I'm reading fear? Or is that surprise? It's hard to tell. I'm fine yet. Yeah. Wait, read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with what with a combination of body heat readings and face recognition and context. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you sure you're fine? Ye yeah. Scared or surprised? She's not wrong, though. Wait, does that mean your last name isn't really Hayes? Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic, and that's what people usually look for in this business. I did look up what Dorothy Hayes was a reference to, and now I've forgotten what it is. I believe it's a musical act. That sounds right. I tried other names, though. Dolores Hayes. Dolores Hayes, that was it. That was the actual one. Genesis uh -huh. Graham. I tried Dorothy Warrior once, but a legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. Gotta defend your trademark. So, what's your legal name, then? Rebecca Dorothy Willow Graham. A bit of a mouthful, if you ask me. So, Dorothy's actually your second name? Should I call you something like Becky, then? People have always called me Dorothy rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I chose it. It's useful, too. People try to falsify stuff using my name, and they always get caught. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name? Yep. Only my mom, or guardian, calls me Rebecca. And it's so weird to hear it from others. What about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as a last name. Shortly after I joined their household, they separated, so I was left with his family name first. Hold on, so your real name, in short, would be Rebecca Willow. Doesn't have the same pizzazz to it, if you ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Dolores Hayes, known variously as Lo Lola Dolly, affectionately as Lolita, Larry uh, Dol Dolores I Schiller, is a primary love interest and victim. Da -da 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 -da. I see I see you punched that name into Google, too, and also stopped at the first result. Yeah. All right, then. <laughs> That's really all you need to know. Uh, LolitaWikiFandom.com. Yep. Or LolitaNovel.Fandom.com. Stop it. It'd be like if you, I called you Julianne all of a sudden. Nah. 
can take your own medicine. Him. Whoa, that was anger I just read now. Lots of anger. I think it's weird enough already if you call me Jill instead of Honey. <laughs> weird, huh? How can you end up feeling associated with a name that's not e that's not yours? I have an uncle that always called me Tina. He kept calling my cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Neither of us mind it, though, because he's calling us what he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That, and it's completely useless to try and correct him. Well, you know, maybe that effect is true for your clients, too. How so? Well, you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're you, right? Right, we had this whole existential con conflict last week about uh, being hired to do roleplay and nothing but. Mm -hmm. Well, think about what happens when it's announced that a character will be played by a different actor. Sure, it's a character, but people are also going for the actor playing the character. So you're saying that they go for my roleplay instead of just mere roleplay? Sounds too far-fetched. Sounds plausible, actually. Okay, honey, I'll take my leave now. I don't want to take up all of your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. I need to remember to buy more cigars. Does she mean actual cigars or more cigarettes? Who knows? Back! Did I miss something? Unless you count the worst PP... PBV match in pay-per-view main event fight you'll see all year? Not really, no. All right. Don't know why I tripped over PPV so madly. Going out? I'll have a word with Gogo -Go outside. He was so hyped for that match, he must be devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Say. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? The, the nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, dear. Ellipses. Ahem. Uh, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch a little bit, though. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, maybe get some cream for that. Some aloe vera. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today, but I want to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Buster? Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested me taking him with me. Ah, I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. Something cold for, Something cold for say. No, nothing we can do for that. Uh, I think we generally go for this. For say. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we get something on the rocks? Um, yeah, I thought this was on the rocks. I was looking at some other stuff. Uh, Sunshine Cloud, maybe. On the rocks and blended. There, there we go. go. There we are. Good catch. Something cool to say. Here we go. Here. Yeah, this is the one. Why drink something cold when the weather outside mm -hmm. is so cold, too? It's not that cold, actually. Say so you're not dressed for the cold <laughs> either. She's from Boston. Yeah. But I've always had a decent tolerance for the cold, so I'm not a good reference. So Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow, and it's having a meeting today. So I'm just helping her by checking on some things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that. I can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. 
I I want you to know that I have a, I want you to have a good time. Have fun. Drink a couple of beers in our honor. <laughs> I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? They're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food, though. She'll, so at the end of the party, she lets staff t the staff take home whatever's left. She always buys toys for all the children her of her staff members. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she's got just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Ella. Heh. <laughs> Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party and she's likely celebrates it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Jill? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actually look for parties to attend, though. I just don't mind going to them. Ah, I see. I only go to the parties that Stella is attending, but otherwise I just stand there without anything to say. That and I'm not one to wear dresses, you know? You're not? I'm a tattoo ripped. They don't look cute on me. Say, there's a very particular audience that would disagree heavily. Say, 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 you need to spend more time on the internet. Mm. The right parts of the internet, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Although, with all this healing I have to do, I won't be as fit as usual for a while. They're too, um, breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> but I bet you'd look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. Last time I wore one, I remember worrying my arms were too thin or something like that. We all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. Oh, but she does have one. She distresses a lot about her bust size. Really? She's not that small. I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Again, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Well, I guess comparisons are useless here. They rarely help with complexes. Mm-hmm. Well, she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've seen her before and after she tucks them away, but I guess I've never cared to ask this enough to ask the specifics. They're also why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um... Drills? You can't color out like that, say. Come on. <laughs> the drills are fashionable. Come on now. They do look a bit drilly, don't they? She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. She seems affluent enough. Why not just go through a reduction surgery? Because she's also kind of likes having that size. She takes her bust after her mom. And Miss Carmine uh, is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence. And a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Still quite, has quite the admiration for her mom. So I guess a breast reduction would feel like betraying her? Huh. This is complex. Mm hmm. I'm making it sound like she's hiding J cups or something like that. I guess in a taller and th on a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter and thinner than the norm. Do you get self self conscious about your bust size, Jill? Not really. I've been more self conscious about my height. Although it's usually come up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes and no. It's not my bus size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. Again, say, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> and I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help, would help with that. You're fine, don't worry. Thank you. 
Can I get you anything else? Hmm. You have something non-alcoholic? I do. Give me a sec. Uh, something non-alcoholic, for say. I forget if that has uh, any alcohol in it. But maybe I will go back to that uh, blue fairy I was looking at before. There we go. Uh, there's time for it. Uh, Why don't you age it or did you hit age? Yeah, I did not hit age. Reset. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two. I'll age in next. There we go. There we are. Here. Thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? It makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least, makes my legs go numb. And also, there's also not uh, opportunities to get a drunk at uh, the first day, so I haven't been bothering. Ah, uh, I see. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not uh, above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy even when you're not. Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? That's a good question, actually. Usually people like feeling numb because their numbness helps them forget their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food. Or who are suffering from some pain that only alleviates when drunk or high. It doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side that nobody deserves to be part of. Mm. Ahem. There's also a matter of addiction, you know? You start just liking the drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know, you're hooked. Oh yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of uh, party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy. It'll just be me, boss, Gil, and a couple of regulars. They'll bring food, we'll chat for a while, and that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning madness that Stella's throwing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Mm. Ellipses. Hey, say. Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm going to check one last errand before going home. No, I mean, what do you plan on doing now with the White Knights disbanded and all? Mm, to be honest, I don't know. I never prepared a plan B because I figured if you can go with a plan B, why not just make it a plan A? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. And I'm tired of the blatant corruption. Sick of it. Oh. But I'm alive. Hmm? I learned something after that hell in Apollo Trust. Life is not something that you can just throw away easily. Clawing my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in the bank was ridiculous, but I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but, I'll, but I'm alive. I'll figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Well, I gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Mr. Detective. Ah, uh, hey there, girl. Hold on. I'm losing to a bird. <laughs> gotta get in. Gotta get that key phrase in there. Give me a strong drink, won't you? All right. Something strong for Mr. Detective, perhaps something manly. Uh, but type manly drink. Mm. Give him the crow spike. No one's gonna ask for that. Uh. No one's gonna want to drink this thing. So sour, manly, sobering. 
Yeah, just get up in there. Two, four. All blended. Serve that. Here you go. Yes, this will do. So, what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case and I happened to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone. A gun for hire. Gun for hire. What about the girl? Crimson something? I am tracking that girl. Did you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered me a huge amount of money and, well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder, though, there has to be more to that whole thing than just acting as middleman to look for some murder. Hmm. Say, how safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws. The walls are soundproof. And I really couldn't give less of a shit about selling info to anyone. Okay, then. Wait. Soundproof walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? They stab people out uh, for music opinions. That's true. And riot for uh, pay-per-view fights. <laughs> They're quite talkative, the bastards. It'd be annoying without those walls. All right, then. Have you heard of Lord Lance Lavender? Nope. He's some big name from Kanyevania. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, you know, has since changed its name to Yevania. <laughs> In the future, of course. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to glitch says nanomachines. Once the con in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nanomachines initiate a reaction. Essentially, they'll just eat through the air person's body until there's nothing left. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes the that reaction and if it could be used to fight nanomachine rejection. Uh-huh. Well, turns out the Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to earn her living and earn her living here, and he hasn't seen her ever since. He could be lying, you know. Doubt it. I did my research. She, he, she really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract, and all the tracking and tracking all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. What about Cobalt Velvet? Okay. A cobalt Velvet for Mr. Detective here. Hmm. I'm realizing it probably wasn't just a Kanye reference, but also a Castlevania reference. Because yeah, that makes the, sense. Because they uh, referenced blood. And what, and what that was doing to the body. Ah, what is man? A miserable little part of... Uh, a mis miserable little pile of dark, beautiful, twisted fantasies. Yeah. And nanomachines and microplastics. Absolutely. Here you are. Oh, you actually did it. Were you expecting me to mess up so you didn't have to pay? A little bit. No. <laughs> so what made you accept the contract anyway? Keeping in mind all the risks you told me last time. He told me he wanted to see her again one last time, or at the very least, deliver her a message. He could, be, he could have been lying. Yes, people lie. You made your point. Even then, I felt... I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like to not not being able to find your daughter. What it's like to be apart from her, not knowing what she's doing, or even if she's all right. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, we had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to come show up, but then she, I started getting worried and went out to find her. I couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody had seen her. Soon I was worried if something might have happened to her. 
I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of com contacts began to grow. I finally found her, tracking, taking cover in some dumpster, unconscious from starvation. So yeah, I just couldn't say no to his request of finding his, his daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. Ellipses. So, how's the search going? I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to her from... The, compared to the her from before the bank incidents, though, she seems slower somehow. Somehow. Either she's let her guard down, or something else is happening. What will you do when you find her? I have this letter I'm sp supposed to deliver to her. I don't know what it says, and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? I might not look like, but I can take care of myself, bartender. I don't believe you. You don't look yeah, like. Yeah, I really don't. Maybe you have a gun. You don't stay so long in this business without picking up a couple of, of tricks. Does one of them involve pointing and yelling, Look over there! and then running away. You know, you distract them with some antidote about the, the shirt on the second button on their shirt. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I better go back to work before her trail goes cold. Please come again. Are you done? Yeah. Okay, then. I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. No working beforehand. The bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dress in your absolute best. We're having a party, after all. All right. Where's Gil, by the way? He stored all of our things in his home before because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home already and bring stuff to bring the stuff tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on. Wait a bit and I'll go with you. Okay, sure. Thanks. No funds, no mistakes. I know the oh, small yeah. party is what you needed. Merry Mega Christmas! Let us celebrate Santa's resurrection as the Mega Santa that saved Christmas from the Redmonds. Happy holidays. Beautiful. I am going to go grab a little bit more water. I'll be right back. Okay. We, can, uh, we can save up and we'll uh, continue. I'll sit tight. It's there to poke around right now. All right. I think I'll see. Yeah, I'm just uh, exploring if there's anything else I can click on in the room. You know, we've got the computer and Jill herself. Uh, ooh. Message from huh. the blog. You want to take a turn reading? Mega Christmas time is here. Bye, Mickey. I'm way too used to Christmas, but the mega tradition here in Glitch City is mega comfy. I know it's an incredibly absurd name, and the holiday isn't any less crazy due to its origin, but I find it amazing how GC managed to replace the original festivities. Some places celebrate Christmas eating fried chicken, but here they outright change the holiday. Well, it's not that different considering it's still the same dates, but it's still pretty cool. Whoops, I gotta go. Time to sign some books. Heart, heart. Was it Mega Christmas or Mega Christmas? M <laughs> with, with, with or without the space? Mm. Don't know, don't care. And what's on the augmented eye? Yoru Yori is the best show this season. Oh, this is the reference to that uh, school club anime about uh, lesbians. <laughs> that doesn't narrow it down, but uh, 
the, those double O's are U's, and that that's a that's an I. It's not you're, subtle. You're... <laughs> if you weren't a fan of Slice of Life or Yuri shows already, then be prepared to join the most church this season with the premiere of Yuri Yuri, one of the funniest shows I've seen in recent years. The pals at the popular Danger U forum seem to seem divided. However, seem to divided. Nope. This is such obvious pandering. Remember, remember when anime was about women doing womanly things and being the shit out of each other? What is this trash? <laughs> the girls just have haters who hate their lives, or are just haters who. There's like, I'm going to marry marry Shinatsu. Wake me up inside. I can't wake up. You can catch YY every Friday on RSTV. I'm pretty sure our friend Spaceman Hardy has been quoted saying exactly this. Yeah. Uh. Is it sexist to have an army of robot women by Lana Smithy? <laughs> the ones of that artificial intelligence, mind you. The King of the West, Kanye, <laughs> from the Western nation of Kanyevania, <laughs> has approximately 6,000 robot soldiers, all of whom look like the hottest girls around. But is the show quirkiness from the wacky dictator problematic? It gets funnier and funnier. <laughs> <laughs> those dictators from Venezuela or whatever just do what they want they don't give a shit Mariana Zimmer 35 told the augmented die during a street interview they're all pretty hot though if I was him I'd have done the same why bother with the real thing you can just make them from scratch to match your every needs more as we investigate <laughs> bravo game bravo I'm pretty sure Kanye Venio went through demilitarization demir demir before uh, right, what was the best one for us? Want to watch it? Anime is for nerds. Update 2. Wilm receiving mysterious messages. The messages have suddenly stopped and everything is normal again. Still, we can't stop wondering what's the deal. Was it a prankster or someone who just discovered how to subvert public communication channels in Wilm? Either way, some reports indicate that Wilm behavior has been rather unusual as of late, although we can only imagine the confusion they were going through. Not the first time. Let's not forget that something similar happened five years ago when the Loom advancement was at a historic high. Fortunately, nothing came out of it. What will happen again? Time will tell. Spooky. Spooky. A bit, yeah. What just flashes in my mind? It was uh, Orbital Children. Were you mm. on that episode? I was. Yeah. Where they're just like... Uh, Artificial intelligence reached a record high and then blew up. Yep. Uh, so I'm sure it's nothing though. Yeah, nothing. Nothing will come of that. I'm certain. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to go to the shop. We're going off to work, and by work we mean the party. Woo! So it's Christmas. Christmas time is here. All right. Like, time to put on time to put on the darling love and cry into your drink. Good evening. Oh, right, do you want to take Dana now, or other people? Yeah, I'll take. Uh, I can take right. Jan as well. Jill, I told you to come in your nicest clothes. You have. You came in your you. You came in your uniform. These are the nicest clothes I have with me. Besides, you and Gil are in your uniforms, too. The artist didn't want to draw a second character model. Well, I can re can't really show up in casual co Well, I can't really show up in casual clothing. I'm being monitored. What about the kilt you wore that one time? <laughs> I'm still surprised that one didn't break the dress code somehow. And you, Gil? I don't have that many clothes to begin with. You people depress me. You can well, have one. Well, yeah. Well, everything's in place back there. Ah, Alma's here. You know, there was a time when people greeted others before saying stuff like that. Come on, Jill. Greet her properly. Welcome to Valha. Wait. <laughs> and if that's not a sign that you need to ease up on the work, I don't know what is. Shut up, it's become a reflex. Wait, Alma also came in her usual attire. Why aren't you saying anything to her? Rip sweaters get a free pass. 
<laughs> Correct. Can't argue with that. Why? Why are you asking question? G- <laughs> games not... Don't dignify that with a response, Dana. Silly question. Never mind. Jamie came earlier, too. The dogs went with him to get some ice. Don't we have ice? Trying to take it out of the bartending station is a chore, so it's better to just buy some outside. Huh. What are you doing back there, Alma? Setting up the food warmer. The what? I brought it three days ago. It's amazing. It looks just like something, just like a set of wires, but you can create a frame with them. Put the food inside, press a button, and watch as it warms the food up, just like a microwave. Uh, if you had an air fryer, you would understand. <laughs> it's an inf- it's an infomercial bobble, though. Really useful, but tricky to handle at the same time. One wrong move, and we'll be out of food for the night. Everything will be scorched in a second. Oh. So you brought infomercial stuff, too? Haven't you? It's at the very least, a good idea for gifts. Well. Dynamic entry! Finally, at least somebody came after me. Is it weird that I've always heard that three times in the last hour? Is it weird that I've already heard that three times in the last hour? Dorothy. Uh. Oh, don't be like that. She's not saying it out of malice or anything. She just found it funny. You're taking her side now? Jealous? You wish. You don't need to fight for me. We're not. I'll go check the microwave wires thingy. I'm starting to get hungry. Great, Great idea. idea. I'm sorry. All right, I'll take Jamie. Take the dogs. Sure. Back. Oh. Ah, hello, Jill. Soldier, you're late. Hey, Jill. See, that's how you greet people. You shut it. Ellipses. I'll go help all. Um, uh, uh, I'll go help sweater pups. Nah. Something wrong? She's not very good with dogs. Oh. All right, we're all here, so we can start. Yo, Anchorage. Alma. I know what I said. How's the food doing? It's doing well, but it'll take a bit. Can't you speed it up? I've used these microwave wires things before. It's either warm nicely but slowly or burn that bitch. I choose option two. (laughs) So how long? 15 minutes or so. A bell will ring when the time comes. We need to kill some time then. Hmm. All right, let's play truth or dare. What? I'll pass. Games are for kids. I'm in. Sure, I'll play. Sounds fun. As long as that mutt stays away from me. Can't believe I parsed that that fast. That'll make the time pass faster. I'll pa- You'll play. Mm. All right. Are, are we even on characters here? I think I've got three and you've got three. I believe so. Yes. All right, then. The rules are simple. If you get picked, you pick either truth or dare. After you finish, you get to pick somebody else. We go like that until the food's done. What about punishment games? Those are a hassle. Just issue new questions or challenges until the other person complies. That said, Jill. Yes? You start. Pick someone. Oh, um... Let's see. Click on the portrait of the person you want to pick. Who do we want to pick? Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to get two rotations at this. So right. uh, if you want the first one. Uh, hmm. there, there's a lot of freedom here. Right? So it's whatever you're feeling. I mean, my gut instinct is I want to ask the dog something because it's a talking dog. All right. We will... Uh, 
we will harass the uh, new employee. Okay then, dog. Yes. I dare you to go out and stay there. Jill Peck the dog, who chose truth. That's easy. Let's see. And that's one problem less. <laughs> that was way less fun than I thought Aww. it was going to be. Well, why don't you continue in the dog's place, Dorothy? All right. Dorothy picked Dana, who shows dare. I dare you, Dana, to pick honey, to pick up honey and carry her like a bride. Carry her like a bride. All right. Wait, what? Come, Jill. Get up. Uh, You're welcome. Oh, shut up. Okay, then, Jill. Y yes? Truth or dare? Um, dare? I want you to say... Yes? How can a clam cram in a... You son of a bitch. How can a cram... How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Eh? It's a tongue twister. Say it. Do it, Jill. Ellipses. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Faster. How can a clam cram in a clean cr cream can? How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? You make it seem so easy. How can a clam clam? Damn. Good. <laughs> Great section to read aloud. <laughs> How can a cr clam cram in a cream? Ah! How can a cram? Oops. Wait, little and get confused by tongue twisters? Uh, boss? Yes? You can drop me now. I've thought about it. Oh, right. I wonder how long until the food is done. Cook the portrait. Uh, who you want to pick? Uh, I'm feeling boss. Back to boss. All we, right. we love the boss. Alright, boss. Pick. Truth me. How did you get your arm... On second thought, dare me. Ellipses. Lift Gil by the neck of your shirt. Always with the lifting. Okay. Eh? What? Happy? I guess. Who cares? I didn't hear about your arm. Darn. I do. I care. All right, Gil. Now that I have you in this position, answer me. I didn't pick. You're in, in no position to pick. Now answer. Dana picked Gillian, who chose truth. Did you live in Scotland for two years? Scotland? No. I guess that rules out a couple of possibilities. Um, Chief? What? All oh, right, I'm still lifting you. Sorry. And now she apologizes. Uh, I guess it's my turn. Hey, Alma, truth or dare? Hmm, dare. Oh, oh, I have a suggestion. You stay quiet. Fine. Mm. Mm. How strong are, are those arms of yours? It's still my muscles under them, so not very. Although not having fleshy skin makes things easier. Oh, right. Gillian picked on who chose dare. Wait, that's Wait, true. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's true. Not dare. I just wanted to make sure. I dare you to break this nut with your hands. Okay. Well, that was easy. Holy shit, Kill, are you really into that? <laughs> <laughs> Dana, what did we say about kink shaming? Eh? Asking a woman to break a nut in her hands and then watching her eat it, does that turn you on? Eh? Wait, wait, is this an actual thing that turns guys on? I need to know for professional reasons. <sighs> I'm having I'm having flashbacks to Paul Rudd did some interview where he revealed that he can uh, have apples with his bare hands. Oh. And I, I saw more than a few people being like, I didn't know I was going to enjoy watching that. And then I watched it and I did enjoy watching that. Is that like You're those grapefruit videos? 
uh, I don't remember what it was on. He was just, he, I think he just mentioned it. It's like, oh, I can like have an apple with my bare hands. And someone just like, oh, here's an apple. Do it. Pop. And just kind of twists it apart down the center. A little bit. I, 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 I mean, my recollection, he basically just like pries it apart with his hands, but I could be misremembering it a little. Okay. Get uh, our wait. That was close. That was close this time. My turn then. All right. Hey, Jill, pick. No. Um, truth. Okay, then. What's your most embarrassing childhood dream? Uh, elaborate. For example, when I was a girl, I wanted to be a professional puzzle master. There's still time. <sighs> I guess in a way I accomplished that, but you understand. You can be an anime protagonist, Alma, if you want to be. Ellipses. I want to be a ventriloquist. Huh? When I was a child, I liked this show called Lucia's Fun House. The one with the woman in the house with the talking stuff? That one. My parents divorced when I was around six, I think? Mom was on tour with an orchestra. My dad was working constantly. I spent a lot of time with my grandpa, but he slept a lot, so I was on my own most of the time. I like to pretend things like chairs or beds could talk, since AI wasn't so advanced back then. Anyway, I went to a magic show once, and there was this guy making a puppet talk. My dad told me he was a ventriloquist, so I kind of obsessed about wanting to be one. Even today, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't think about it every now and then. So that's why you pretend fork and talk. It's real fun. I, I love that meta level to it. It's Jill talking to herself this entire time when it's uh, four going and snarking her back. Uh, it's all in her head. She what? Nothing. I'm getting hungry. Okay, I'm you want to pick. Uh, it's your turn again. Uh, uh, let's do Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes. Okay, then, Dorothy. Dare. Do something freaky. Like removing my head? <laughs> removing your... <laughs> because I can remove my head with no problem. Do you want me to remove my head? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to see that. Mm. I don't know if Jill does. Uh, repetition makes... Uh, comedy f one time. Rule of threes. Absolutely. I'll pass. I take your word for it. Anyone want to see that? <laughs> no. No, thank you. I do, but I'm not going to be the party pooper here. Fine. Fine. I guess it's on my turn now. Hey, Dana, what, what do you pick? I'll pick truth. If you had to marry Honey or John, who would you pick? Hmm. Probably Jill. Eh? I mean, she's cute. She's smart. And I kind of owe Gil, own Gil anyway, so it's kind of redundant. The ellipses. The ellipses. <laughs> Double ellipses. Speaking of Gil, truth or truth, fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> Dana picked Gil in who chose truth. <laughs> Pick one for me. Well, where were you born? I don't really know. It's one of those things I can't remember or was never informed about. Strangely, I do remember on early childhood in the Arctic of all places. The Arctic. Oh. Just huh? A bell? Food's ready. Finally. Let's go. Guys, go ahead. I'll have a quick smoke outside. Careful. This is very silly. Ellipses. Uh, I'll switch over to Alma then. All right. Truth or dare, huh? It was fun, I guess. Hey. Hi. Uh. I mean, hello. A bit late for the hello, don't you think? Want one? 
You know I don't smoke. True. Are you leaving already? Yeah, technically we celebrated Meg at Christmas yesterday. But I just got a message from that that Diana is making a ruckus, so I gotta leave. Good luck with that. Speaking of ruckus, how have you been doing? Fine, I guess. All of this has helped keep my mind off things for a while. I feel like this is a uh, bonus scene that we get for what we did before. Oh. <sighs> uh, is it weird to feel the absence of someone you had no contact with whatsoever for the last three years? Ask Katyusha, or any of the old literature maidens whose spouse went off to war types. I mean, even if you had no contact with her, maybe she was constantly on your mind. And speaking of Katusha, tune in for the episode this Friday. If you tweak the circumstances, it's not that different from one of you going to a war. I guess. Well, although the circumstances might make, make me not want to, I've got to go. Careful out there. Oh yeah, you should take the chance to, and spend this time with everyone inside, don't you think? Ellipses. Ellipses. You did say you didn't want any regrets. Yeah, she's right. Hey, Jill's back. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this feels special. I suspect that we are done the chapter. The Blood of Moon and all the like satellites and space junk up there. Mm. I assume I have to click now to advance. No? Well, just let soak in, I guess. Chapter 3, Dolce. Uh, sweetness, I guess? Sweet? I, yeah, I think that is it. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, this is be if I didn't already have the achievement, it would pop up with, this one means sweet. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Federico Fellini, for making that movie and me remembering what it's called. Good stuff. Rent is due on the 30th. Please make sure your account has the necessary 10,000 or you'll be evicted. Oof. Jill wants to see if the Alex doll's beard actually grows. Buying it will prevent her from getting too distracted. Have a very nice day. You've been using that hoodie a lot lately. Sh shut up. All right, let's see. Let's see this uh, Alex figurine from the call classic video game. Yik. This beard grows in real time. Do we really need to pay rent? Uh, presumably. Mm. Yeah, this doesn't strike me as a city that has a lot of renters' rights in it, you know? No, I imagine not. What we got going on? Street race in the Marseille district leads to two dead. The Marseille district is notorious for the number of illegal street races it sees each week and dozens of injured drivers it leaves every year. This time, it has been reported that two people die during a race hosted at the Gate Highway, otherwise known as Death Lane. The transit police are currently investigating the deaths as well as the underground world of illegal street racing. We have several suspects in regards to who is running this underworld, but nothing concrete as of yet. Chief of the Transit Police Department, Jade Esposito, told the Augmented to Eye. The death of these two youngsters will be the last, however. That's a promise. It was a promise he could not keep. I've heard there's a defamation campaign against the district, though. Oh. Being referred to as, uh, Death Lane. Oof. You won't believe what happens in this cartoon by Lana Smithy. Child cartoons are not for children. They're still largely colorful, but the themes they touch on have become rather dark. In fact, every cartoon on air today has dark themes. It's come to the point where innocent animated characters are no longer a thing. I suppose children are young adults from birth now? 
but enter Touch Fluffy Tail, a new show that aims to challenge the current trend. No deep lore, no obscure adult references, no stupid deep plots. Just fun with numbers and fluffy tails, said a TFT producer who asked to remain anonymous to avoid internet backlash. I don't want death threats for making a cartoon for actual kids. Stop. I rescued you. I can touch your tail if I wanna. Touch fluffy tail. Touch fluffy tail. Good to see our Olympics return next year by Alana Smithy. For the 10th consecutive year, the GC Olympics returns to the emblematic Super Silver Thunderdome, this time with a representative from the elusive country of Kanyevania. He's back. Uh, <laughs> Prime Minister Quincy, who was in charge of the committee, told the occupant to die that it wasn't easy getting in touch with the Kanje, and, yet, and that if we had to abide by some of his religious rules in order to see some of the best competitors come to the country. Kanyevania's main religion, Kanyeism. I can't. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Kanyeism prohibits the existence of nanomachines inside the body, and as such, competitors from said country have to perform, perform specific treatments in order to the, repel the swarm. It's a temporary solution, but will do the trick. I'm guessing the tacky bodysuits weren't practical for sports. Amazing. Beautiful. My body is a temple. Uh, we have one new story here. Model Warrior returns to TV. Anyone watching it? I don't even have a TV. So useless. Julianne is old and busted. I heard you talking shit about my waifu like I wouldn't find out. <laughs> I love that. Is it going to be censored? I don't think so. The show was rather tame, a, a fake. As far as I know. I'm going to marry Julian. Oh man, I remember watching this back when I was like 10. I think I discovered porn thanks to it. You will never discover Rule 34 for the first time again. Why keep trying? Never seen the show before. Is it any good or just a meme? It's a meme show. There's nothing outstanding. But what about the sequels? Are those going to be broadcast as well? The sequels are shit. Is, he, is your lip trembling? No. No. She's so happy she could cry. Uh. Oh. And this is after we have uh, it, the uh, what happens in this children's cartoon. Mm-hmm. Story. Uh, quick little save. Oh, that's fine. And off to work, I think. Monday, December 26th. I think it's my turn with Jill. All right. We've been live for an hour, so I think we can go a little while longer. Yeah. Oh, good evening. Hey, Jill. Gil is in the back sorting an ingredient shipment, and I've got things to do. The dog's in charge, okay? Bye. That's what I was looking for, channel two. There. Her, her show's back on the air. There we go. What? Wait, the dog, what? Okay, first order, pet me. No. Pet me. No. I'm in charge and I want you to pet me. Mm. Just gotta ignore that. Time to mix drinks and change lives. AJ. Won't pet you. You'll pet me sooner or later. They all do. <laughs> Won't. Will. He called? He said Will, not Gil. Ah. Uh, who the hell is Will? Nobody. Don't be rude with poor Will. <laughs> There's no will. Do you need me to psych you up then? Shut up. Who, me or Will? <laughs> this is amazing who's on first. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you go back to whatever you were doing. All right. And you stand by. Only if you pit me. 
Go. Uh, the fuck just happened? Well, aren't we spirited today? Welcome to Valhalla. Virgilio? Why you sound so weirded out? You didn't show up with a bombastic soliloquy. Well, putting up an act can be tiring, you know? So it's all an act, then. Wasn't it obvious? So you were fucking with us. I guess. Would you mind getting me a bleeding Jane? Sure. Um, Virgilio wants a bleeding Jane. He asked for it by name, like a normal person. My god. One, two, three, and all blended. Say the name of this drink three times in front of a mirror, and you'll look like a fool. A bleeding Jane. Yes, this is just the thing. So, tired of playing on an act? Care to explain? It's a long story, and I'd honestly rather not talk about it right now. Fair enough. What made you change your mind, though? Well, for one thing, it's safer for me now. The pompous buffoon act was mostly a way to avoid raising suspicion. Safer? There's a word that's been losing meaning lately. Wait, that was your way of avoiding suspicion? Yes. You do know how weird that sounds, right? It sounds weird. You try not to raise suspicion, but you act like a in a bombastic manner that screams you're there. And everyone dismisses the fool as a buffoon and moves on. Hmm. Eh? I mean, you might be right if I were talking about hiding myself. But I'm avoiding certain crowds of people. Yes, my behavior might call everyone's attention. But then everyone just decides I'm harmless and disregards me. And depending on how erratic my actions are, I become harder to read. Giving me yet another layer of enigma. I... Huh. Well, congrats. No offense, but I fell right into your plan. I just dismissed your actions as those of a fool and moved on. You completely fooled me. Thanks. Say, can you give me something spicy? Sure. Something spicy. Something spicy. You did do the Bleeding Jane, right? What's more spice than a Bleeding Jane? Uh, what was that other one just now? Uh, the one the... Blue? Mars Blast? Yeah, Mars Blast. That looks right. Or to camera train. Oh, blended. There we go. Here. Here. Um, aren't you fascinated by spiciness? It's spicy for humans might not be spicy for other animals. Hell, what's toxic for us might not be for other creatures. Do you like spicy things, bartender? I don't mind them, I guess, but I'm not really a fan. That neutral stance is actually weird to come across. Everyone either loves spicy things or hates them with a passion. Do you like it? Lots, not only in regards to painfully spicy things, but also the way mild or slight spice adds to a meal. I've always had this dream of opening a curry stand. As things are, I might actually pursue that dream. Let me know if you do. I haven't had curry in ages. Hey, bartender. Call me Jill. I want to apologize. Hmm? You put up with me all this time without lashing out. I should apologize for my behavior, and thank you for that. Don't worry. I actually feel like I was too rude to you the last time you came. Granted, you came at a really ta bad time, but I should be the one apologizing. You're a client, after all. Don't. I'm actually surprised that nobody else had violently lashed out at me yet. 
You're making me curious as to who you really are, though. Is Virgilio I'm, even your, really your name? It might be. It might not. You were saying? Yeah, I, 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 I thought he, I thought that, that he was saying I'm Virgilio or something like that. I misread the uh, the speaker caption. Huh. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a magnet for people who hide their identities or sort and sorted pasts. Gil, Jamie, you. You're all like a cast of a visual novel. <laughs> um, did you say something? Just rambling. Pay me no mind. Now that I think about it, how did you find this bar? It was... I was avoiding some chaps and came to this alley. Huh. Again. Again? In my time here, I've heard avoided people and ended up here enough times to make me believe that the original owner built the bar here thinking about the runaway public. You make me sound like a criminal. You're not helping. The expression runaway doesn't just mean people escaping the law, though. We've all had people avoiding... We've had people avoiding stalkers or solicitors. I've seen people more shocked by an... In insistent salesman than a shady figure. Maybe because the sale salesman is more of an active predator? I don't know. A troublesome part of the city is right near the shopping district. Let them know that there's a bar and they'll come. Sorry, I should stop rambling to myself so much. I don't mind it. Do you think I'm, sort I'm a sort of a criminal, though? Like I said, you're not helping. But for all I know, you might be the buffoon I've seen the other days. In any case, can I get something bitter here? On it. I want something bitter. Was that one of the flavor drinks? No. Uh, go for the suplex, I think. Mm. Two, three. One, two, three, camera train, all on the rocks. Next. Small twist on the pile driver. Here. This works. Do you like coffee, Miss Bartender? As weird as it may sound from a smoking bartender, no, I don't. Well, I get it. It's not for everyone. That cat boomer the other day. What about her? Still scared of her? Not really, but she looks so familiar. Maybe you're mixing her up with another cat boomer? No, that's not it. It's like the bandaged girl last time. Even with the bandages, there's just something really familiar about her. Maybe you need to stop thinking about it. Answers usually come when you stop stressing out. You might be right. Well, I leave you for now, bartender. Thanks for everything. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hello, Mr. Detective. Ellipses. And here we are, another meat person wandering into the bar. Anything I can get you? Gut punch. Okay. Got punch for the sun detective. Well, somebody's had a bad break during the case. Oh. Right, is, which uh, reminds me, is this where I'm supposed to actually mess up his orders on purpose? Oh. Uh, now I'm curious. Because that'd be worth it. Uh, I typically do read ahead uh, just to see what we're doing, but I think I. We did about uh, three days worth, practically, with the way this one went. And da, 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 da.
Yeah, I think I'm actually supposed to mess up both of these drinks, and then we get uh, some interesting stuff. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's go this way, then. Peek behind the curtain. I'm not cheating. Shut up. <laughs> On the rocks. And mixed. Here. All right, free drink. Okay, so he doesn't mind at all. So what's up now? A bit of holiday blues, you could say. So you celebrate Mega Christmas? Why wouldn't I? You look more like a Festivus kind of guy. Why does everyone keep saying that? I wonder why, Mr. Costanza. It's a real head scratcher. Well, Festivus is a celebration going against the capitalist madness of that is Mega Christmas. And you know, cheapskate. If you have something to say, say it. I'll refrain. Although, now that I think about it, Holiday Blues is not really tied to a specific celebration. Just the season. A season of consumerist craze. Mega Christmas is just a mockery of what the real Christmas once was. I mean, the season has slowly become enslaved to the corporations over time. Holiday spirit can only be manipulated so much. But then came that turbo male guy. He started a yearly tradition of dressing up like Santa in the ring. Turbo Mail? That can't be his ring name. It is. What was the... Wasn't there a Christmas movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger where he was, like, Turbo Man? Uh... The, um... Oh, that action Jingle figure? All the, yeah, Jingle All the Way. Jingle yeah, all the way. I think, yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Really? Such a tacky name was accepted? <laughs> oh, Jill, you sweet summer child. <laughs> His partner was Buster Master, and his rival was Dr. Chris Max. Tacky names were not a problem. I mean, I knew there was a wrestler that dressed as Santa every year. I also knew that the guy became insanely popular, and the stunt got out of control. And, of course, that's the part everyone sings about. Santa became Nega Santa thanks to the Redman family. What? It, is this the McMahons, or like... The, uh, the Waltons. Mega Santa sees the error of his ways and becomes the mighty Mega Santa, renaming the holiday Mega Christmas. And then every company jumped on the bandwagon and Christmas was Mega Christmas before anyone noticed. Deep lore. So you're telling me that the guy who somehow managed to rename the holiday went by the ring name Turbo Mail. Yep. That makes the whole holiday sound like a joke. A holiday is a joke. And you're telling me you don't celebrate Festivus. <sighs> no, I don't. You know what kind of people celebrate Festivus? The kind that are so lame and bland that they can only talk about how they're better because they celebrate Festivus. I see. Like those jerks who only eat nuke and think they're better than everyone else. Mm-hmm. I see. Anything else I can get you? Get me a fringe reaver, will you? Sure. Let's get him a fringe reaver. And by uh, fringe reaver, we're going to mess up his uh, drink again. He'll be fine. He'll be happy. Here you are. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks a lot. I wonder if he'd be happy if I gave him thinner, just because it's wrong and thus free. Like paint thinner, Jill? I'm assuming that's what he means, yeah. Jill, that, that'll kill the man. <laughs> that's that's why she's feeling so incredulous. Would he be happy to be served something fatal because it would then be free? He's going to sue us. Okay, we both know it's not the holiday blues. Why are you so down? He can't sue us. He's dead. Why so interested? Are you hitting on me? 
Nah, just bored. Besides, you could be my dad. I ne I'd never hit on you. You'd be surprised at the amount of girls that are into older men. I would like to exit this conversation. <laughs> Let me rephrase it. I'd never hit on you, period. Whatever. I'm married anyway. So you want to know why I'm feeling down? If you don't want to tell me, it's okay. Nah, there's no problem. Well, you see, I found that girl I was looking for in her last moments. Ah. Huh, really? I followed her tracks and finally found her. Although, to be fair, it was more like she stopped trying to cover them. She was just sitting in a room near some more corpses. From what I gathered later, it seemed to be some drug lab. She passed herself off as a prostitute and then proceeded to kill everyone inside. When I found her, she was drugged to hell and back. According to what little I could get out of her, she was dying. Seems the same rejection she used to kill her targets was also killing her, too. You mentioned that she caused a nanomachine nan rejection of sorts, right? So I'm guessing the city's nan machines seeped into her body, causing a reaction. As a psycho for hire, you'd think she'd have had the foresight to think about that before coming into the city. But anyway, I had a job to do, so I delivered her letter. Only for her to tear it apart without reading it. Must have been frustrating, huh? I mean, all that work for her to rip it to pieces? I never thought someone like something like that would happen. I thought something like that would happen. To be honest, at that point, I was really just doing it for my own sense of peace. Why tear the letter, though? Apparently, the guy wasn't exactly the best father out there. She was born for experimental purposes, a living guinea pig for her father's condition. He was literally going to use her to test any treatment, no matter how unorthodox. She was experimented upon from an early age, and when she found out what her blood was capable of, she just snapped. In her own words, I didn't have to take shit from anyone anymore, not even my quote-unquote father. So she ran away, came to the city, became a gun for hire. Got trapped in the bank, and the rejection started to kick in. Tough stuff. It hit me hard, you know? I kind of saw my own daughter in her at that moment. The anger she bore against this old man. I've seen it before, many times when my daughter was a teen. Really? She... My daughter was born as a boy, and back then she spent all her time angry. I had a short fuse, so I lost control with her more often than not. I yelled at her, she yelled at me. Mm. When she turned 11, she started her transition process. Her behavior changed a lot. She was calmer, friendlier. My friendship with her was already fractured. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that she decided to give me a second chance. I've been doing my best to make amends, but I still remember the anger on her face. And to see that girl in her death throes with that same look. Maybe you shouldn't be here, then. Well? Maybe you should be with your daughter, preventing that stuff from ever happening again. You finished your job, take your lesson to heart and go spend time with her. Not everyone gets a second chance, at, gets second chances, so don't waste it. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks for everything, bartender. You better appreciate the free drinks. I might that might have cost me rent. Hmm. Does that count as scaring a client off? Yeah. Okay then. Um Bo no, wait, she's at Gil, you there? Yeah. Taking your break. Let me know if something comes in. Something comes up. There we go. There was more to that than I thought there was. Hmm. I think I had done some clicking around to find that um, uh, Crimson Rose story. But then he, I didn't hear the other part about the daughter. Hmm. Things are pretty quiet outside. Excuse me, is this the Valhalla bar? 
It certainly is. Welcome. What can I get you? Actually, I'm looking for... Achievement unlocked. An old friend. Oh, boy. Lexi! There she is. I'm looking for some stuff. I'll be with you in a second. Like two peas in the pod. I know. <coughs> Nowhere else have a drink in the meantime. So, you're Jill? You know me? I've been keeping in touch with Dana ever since she left Neo San Francisco. She always talks about you, about her sister. About her friend in Panama, about her sister. <coughs> about her sister, and about this dog she picked up from the streets. A dog? Yeah, I think she calls him Gil Jillian? <laughs> mm, that can't be right. First, I've heard of this dog. Yeah, she told me he appeared at the door looking very pitiful. And she always talks so happily about how he opens up to up to the people around him. She's even asked me to help finding help for help finding where he came from. Hmm. Hmm. Um. So a dog, huh? A chew. Did you hear something outside? Probably just a dog sneezing. What can I get you? Mm, let's try the fringe weaver. On it. Let's give her a fringe weaver, which would be this and all of that. Actually, we need to start uh, doubling things in size. Uh, I have to remember the other part of this, all aged and mixed. I remembered correctly, but we double check anyway. A fringe weaver. Seems right. Thanks. Ah, sorry, my office is a mess, so I can't let you in right now. I'll just go buy some. Take your time. This is the first time I've seen her get excited about someone. Well, I guess it's been almost seven or eight years since I last saw her. She had a brief stint with me at the Neo San Francisco Police Department. Huh, another huh. thing to add up to the oddly adventurous past of my boss. I can't picture her as a policewoman, though. Well, she was more of a collaborator. Everyone in the department acknowledged her abilities, and she helped us from time to time. She was authorized to come with us, but couldn't act by herself. She didn't have a gun or a badge, but she'd have a radio to stay in touch. And I'm not going to lie, she was one of the best backup partners I've had over the years. She once took out a band of punks with nothing but a loaf of bread. A loaf of... Yeah, that sounds like boss. She requested the next loaf have sesame seeds. Something about it hitting harder? So her penchant for swinging bread loaves like swords is not just some weird habit. And how did she end up with the police of all places? Her old league, the Grand Slam Fighters, was fighting against the NS N NSFW. Neo San Fran Wrestling? Nothing weird about that. Exactly. NSFW. I was there because I needed to ask the owner of the league a couple of questions. But then a fight broke out. Many drunkards joined the fray not too long after. I was going to start evacuating the place, but before I knew it, she had already subdued the troublemakers. I asked for help with the rest of the case. One thing led to another. Oh. I was afraid that she might have become involved with an, as an alternative to jail time. Nah, she's not that kind of girl. So you came all the way here for a visit? I'm in the middle of some investigations, actually. I don't think the Neo San Fran police have any say in what, whatever happens here. Nah, I'm not in the police anymore. Just a simple private investigator. If you came all the way here on a case, you can't just be a simple private investigator. Fair enough. 
You wouldn't by any chance have heard about a group called the Swap Spiders, would you? First I hear that name. Sorry. Don't worry. Say, let's try this. Sugar Rush. Sure. And, you know, thinking about it, uh, this character probably is a cameo from um, Read Only Memories. I mm, bet you. That would make sense. They seem to have that design going on. Sweet girly and happy. Here. Yeah, this is what I've heard about. All right, fuck it. Let's just hit a bar and chill. Boss, you own a bar. Doctors don't diagnose themselves, Jill. I guess you're right. I guess they don't prescribe their own medicine. That's illegal. Wait, is she? Calm down. You don't need to overdo it. We're not dating anymore. Wait, she what? I was bored. She was lonely. We gave it a try. It didn't work. We broke up after less than a week. Jill's eyes just go wide. Huh? Suff currently suffering from saucer face. What didn't work? She was too uptight. She was too Dana. To Dana. On our first date, she got her head stuck in a bucket. Dana became a knight in a hardware store getting the thing off. And this was the friend she called about getting the helmet off her? Eh. Oh, to Dana. Now, yeah, I get it. Anyways. I haven't seen you in person in a long time, and you have to leave before New Year's. I don't want to make a mess. Don't try too hard. Seriously, don't. You'll make a mess. Let's just go outside and drink Hassie. I came all the way here to drink Hassie. I have Hassie at home. Hey, this stuff is like caviar here, thanks to the import rates. All the more reason. I'll take. I'll take your offer then. You go ahead while I grab some ice. Okay. My pleasure to meet you, Jill. Please come again. Hmm. Hey, boss. Yes? Lexi said something that got me thinking. The relationship? No, I... Actually, you got me curious. Do you swing that way, boss? Cuteness knows no boundaries. Ah, the pansexual dilemma. Hmm. Right. Anyway, what got me thinking is that she thinks Gil's a dog. She does? Yeah, when you talk about him, she thinks you're talking about a dog. Hmm. Gil's patrolling nearby with Nacho and the other dog. This'll be fun! <laughs> That's... I'm afraid. It's a worrying statement. Yep. Just don't overdo it. <laughs> Feeling lonely. That voice. I had a feeling. Hey, Joe. Long time no see. Really long time no see. Seriously, it feels like it's been over a year since I last saw you. Hey, I was watching that. Bring the... Bring the signal back. Oh, no, bring me no signal. I was planning on visiting you last week, but things were pretty heavy back then. Yeah, jeez. So I just waited in the background until the tension wore off a bit. Mm. Earth to Joe, I'm talking to you here. If I ignore her, she'll leave. I'm not an unfathomable sense of dread. You can't just ignore me, you know. I can and I will. You can't catch me, gay thoughts. Don't know Julian. where that came from. <laughs> Julian Stingray, I'm talking to you. Oh, is that how we learned her last name? It's a pretty good name. Ellipses. Calm down. Don't fall for her taunts. Don't react to the name Jules. How did she know my full name, though? 
I thought your full name was Julian Natalie Stingray, or did you legally remove the Natalie? Never mind that. Is she reading my thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of written in the middle of the screen. Quick, move the plug the controller into port 2. Hard not to see them, actually. We're, we're really going meta here. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I'm going crazy. That's such a self-centered way to see the world. You assume that you're crazy because you can't accept that this world could be weirder than you think. This world is amazing because of the things you can't just can't explain. And just because only your experience, only you experience something doesn't mean it's a lie or that you're crazy. I mean, just look at the ASMR. Where is this going? Am I about to be attacked? No, I'm pretty sure that's what a crazy person would say in this scenario. You acknowledged me! Shit. That's good, I want... I'm not serving you anything. It's still in the lip. Still in brackets, so... Uh... What? Why? Last time you came, I had to clean the drinks I served you off the floor. Don't be like that. The drinks were also paid for with my money! I don't know how you did, but that set any and all plans I had for the rest of the week off balance. I was going to buy some curry with that money, and I had to put up for those drinks. Dog duty done. I know we have slow days, but for God's sake. You just, like, walk through, Anna? Presumably. You okay? You look angry. Uh, I'm fine. Good job out there. I'm back. Ah, boss, what happened? Meeting cute cut short. At least I drank the Hass... Hassies... Hassie... The bottles. Are you okay? You look distraught. I'm fine. So they really can't see you. I mean, you're right in front of them. And you're wearing jeans under a skirt. Why? Just... Why? To annoy people, of course. It's fashion, Jill. Is this a, is that a new trend? Why does she think she what does she think she's doing? Everyone feels like it's not quite right. Everyone thinks they should call you out. But they can't bring themselves to do it because it's not that wrong. You little troll. But they there are things like spats after that. There are things like spats after that. Okay. It's uncanny, right? Not all that wrong, and they can't stop staring. Not like anyone other than me could see it, though. They could see it if they wanted to. Jill, you're making an awful lot of faces there. Are you okay? Y yeah, just remembering stuff. Man, I miss not being crazy. Boss, I'm leaving early today. And you stay here. Who stays where? Inside voice, Jill. Crap, did I just... You have to be the first person I met who mixes their inner and outer voice. Uh, um, I thought I saw one of the dogs near the counter. Sorry. Okay. Can I leave just a bit earlier today? Sure, thanks for taking care of the fort. What about me? You haven't left yet. I'll thank you when you leave. <laughs> Don't think that's what you meant. It's not what I... Whatever. Well, the service bound did not granted. That's okay. Well. Here's something in case you felt lonely today. His total transfer, though, was uh, 900, so it's a good start if we have a week to go. Mm. But uh, I think that does cut us off for the, the day, though. Yeah. Was like two or three days? Let's see. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We, we started on the 12th, as now day yes. 15, so... Some shorter days in there. 
Uh, yeah. And we have one, two, three, four, five? Five? Days le left in the game, technically? Oh, boy. Closer oh. than I ever was. Yep. The home mm. stretch. Uh, it's still fun and silly. Well, wild stuff. All right. Uh, what are we up to? Let's see. Uh, this week, I don't know that anyone else is streaming until we have our episode of the podcast on Friday. Mm -hmm. It is summer at the movies, so next time it's going to be my episode with Jamal, and it's going to yeah. be on Girls and Panzer. Yes. Uh, fun, fun tank battles. Indeed. Uh, t -t 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 -t. And then, yep. Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday ends up being uh, Andrew and Steph continuing with uh, I, the Somnium Files 2. Uh, I did say I would go into a hole and not come out until I was finished that game, and then I had a convention weekend. So. That'll do it. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm a decent way through the game, but I haven't fit, hit the uh, hit an ending yet, hmm. as it were. That was one of the main. I think I'm locked into the path I'm on, though. So, hmm. I got right. farther. Uh, so I'll have more to say about that another time. Uh, who is live today that we can raid? I think it's all the same people. Uh, Ryan McKean is live. Doing uh, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. Should probably check out that game after mm. I finish the first game in any capacity. Indeed. That will that will probably make following the second one much easier. It's not even the same genre, which is the real weird thing. A, is it? It's a Muso game, and huh. and so like it's a, it's a sequel to Fire Emblem Warriors technically, but it's a sequel to Fire Emblem Three Houses in particular. It's real weird. I don't pretend <sighs> okay, to understand it. Okay, Nintendo. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think we'll see you n next week then, everyone. Thanks mm. for coming. Indeed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night.